Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today I am showing you round one of the Poker Beach Tournament. This is a tournament in which I recently took part, hosted by the website PokerBeach.com, and I do lose the coin flip there, but it really doesn't matter. In total now, I think I've won five out of my first 25 coin flips since I went back to PTCGO. Now, I'm going to be playing my Raichu Bats deck, and you're going to get a good look at this deck. We are on PTCGO, which means we can see nice and clearly, but it also means that we can see discard piles and all quite clearly, whereas we can't when we're recording live. And the reason I'm putting this up, whereas I don't always put PTCGO videos up, is because this is an actual tournament with real prizes on the line. So I'm hoping that I can be playing against good opponents with good decks. It means I'm going against my rule of... Uh, not putting myself on stream, but needs must, ladies and gentlemen. So my opponent starts with a mulligan, and I've got a Zubat active. Oh, and my opponent's got a second mulligan. Now I can see he's playing a Mega Houndoom deck. This isn't something that terribly worries me as a Raichu Bats player. Um, oh, more mulligans here. He's not having a good time. And I am actually starting to think, is he just playing a 4-4 Houndoom line? Is he playing any Shaman? Is he playing any other attackers? Because at this stage, he doesn't appear to be. And another mulligan. I mean, it, it's good for me, unless, of course, he judges me turn one. It's also giving me a good look through his deck. Although, honestly, I haven't been looking at his mulligans as much as I should. Whenever your opponent mulligans, you really should. And we can see a judge there. Whenever your opponent mulligans, you really should make an effort to have a look through their hand. And you can use that to draw certain conclusions about their deck. Are they playing this particular tech card? So, for instance, having seen all six of those mulligans, it means that I can feel fairly confident my opponent is not playing Enhanced Hammer, so I can put down my DCs a bit early and they're likely to be safe. So I've got a good opening hand, but we'll see what my opponent does. And the fact that my opponent has started Houndoom is not doing anything for my theory that... He um, might only be playing four basics. So you see there he's saying, well, that doesn't usually happen. But then again, you know, maybe I don't know how many basics he's playing at this stage. So in this game, I'm going to be thinking about taking down those 210 HP Mega Hound Dooms. Um, which can be a bit of a pain. It's doable. Raichu does 20 damage for each Pokemon on your bench. So with a Sky Field and a full bench... You'd be doing 160, and then we can add Muscle Band and Crobat and Zoo, uh, Golbat damage as we go through the game as well. But it's going to take a lot. So we get to Battle Compressor, and we can see that he's dropped free Fire Energy, and that's it. That is not a good start from my opponent at all there. Now, I cannot... Actually, sorry, I can. It is an outside possibility, but I've got my Muscle Band there. Oh, that's my first turn, sorry. Um... Unfortunately, had I gone first, I could potentially win this turn by getting a Raichu, but I don't, so it's a moot point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another Zubat. Um, I need Zubats and I need Pikachus at this stage of the game, but I've got a Zubat in the active that might get KO'd next turn, so let's get a Zubat down straight away. Now, I've got another Ultra Ball there, so I can afford to dump, for instance, a Lysander and maybe a Dark Energy. Because I'm not going to probably be re uh, retreating the Zubat this turn. So what I can do next turn is actually free retreat the Zubat. And I can free retreat the Zubat. So I don't need to put an energy on it now. If you're wondering why I'm playing one of that Pikachu. It's because I didn't have a fourth of the Pikachu. The good one from X and Y. Now you see the trainer's mail there. I'm going to want something I can immediately play. It's a Sycamore. I've got a Sycamore in hand. What the point? Now, I'm going to make a misplay here. I should not be putting the DCE on that Pikachu. And here I'm going to play a Shaman and use his setup ability to draw six cards. And the reason very simply is, now I've got a Pikachu of a Muscle Band and a DCE. So if my opponent is able to hit a Lysander and an Energy next turn, he can take down the Pikachu with the uh, DCE and the Muscle Band. Whereas if my opponent, I'm just going to get a uh, goal back ready for next turn because I don't need a Pokemon for this turn. Um, now, if my opponent 
has a Lysander now, he's going to be able to take down the Pikachu with the Muscle Band and the DCE, whereas had I put the DCE on the other Pikachu, he can either get rid of the Pikachu with a DCE, or he can get rid of the Pikachu with a Muscle Band, but he can't get rid of both. So, not the best of plays from me there. A silly mistake. Now, this is an online tournament. I am sitting listening to Iron Maiden at the time, and my attention, it, it, you're not paying. Oh, and there is the Lysander, and he gets the Pikachu, which just makes me a silly boy indeed. And EVS Seekers for another Lysander, my opponent clearly not having much good there. He clearly hasn't got very much. Although he did make a little mistake there, because you notice he had a VS Seeker. Now on his first turn of the game, he used a Battle Compressor to get rid of free fire energy. Had he used the Battle Compressor to get rid of a Sycamore, for instance, he could then have VS Seekered for the Sycamore. And when you're drawing dead, you should always do that. A lot of players do. That way, you can draw into a VS Seeker, and it's like you drew into something like a Sycamore. So you see that the question is, do I put down the evil towel or not? I'm going to choose not to. And the reason is, if I don't hit a Skyfield, I've got one bent space left. And I want to put down a second Pikachu. And of course, I don't draw a Pikachu. More worryingly, I don't draw a DCE. And you see that I've drawn through about half of my deck there. So statistically, hey Alex... I should be drawing into another DCE now that I've gone down to half my deck, but I haven't, so blah, 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 whoop-de-doo, it doesn't matter. I'm not getting an attack this turn. Now, on the one hand, it worries me. I don't have a second Pikachu on the bench, and I know he's got a Lysander that he can play to KO the Pikachu. But then again, if he does play that Lysander to KO the Pikachu, or the Raichu, I should say, um, that Houndoom does 80 damage, plus 80 if you discard the fire energy. So he can KO the Raichu, but he has to get rid of both his fire energy on his Houndoom to do so, and he chooses to just take down the Golbat instead, so that he can get a KO next turn. So it remains possible here I can get the KO. His Houndoom's got 170 HP left. Raichu can hit for 160 with a full bench, um, I've already used my Muscle Band, unfortunately. But then I can use Golbat to add 20 damage by evolving a Zubat, and Crobat to do 30 damage by evolving that existing Golbat. But I'm just going to grab a VS Seeker, play a Sycamore to get a new hand, and I still don't have a DCE, but that's alright. I've got a Pikachu, I can play the Golbat to evolve and get another 20 damage down. Um, I can play a Zubat down, a uh, Evil Tau down, I should say. Now I'm not going to play the DCE because I want to uh, the Dark because I want to draw a DCE. But I can play a Shame in there and hopefully draw until I've got. Oh, I still don't have a DCE. Now you can see that I'm down to 17 cards in my deck, which means I've drawn approximately three quarters of my deck. I've seen one DCE. That is not good, ladies and gentlemen. It also means if I had a DCE, that would be game right here. I'd be doing 160 plus a 60 on him. I would have the KO. Now, I'm thinking of putting the Dark Energy onto the Evil Tower there. I'm slightly worried because I have no way of retreating it at the moment. But I'm not so worried about that because either, you know, if he KOs the Evil Tower, I can attack. And if he uh, lies under something off the bench and KOs it... I can then just put whatever I want active again. So, and if he doesn't KO it or use a Lysander, I can just keep doing 30 and attaching energy from the discard pile. My opponent there complaining about his draws, and to be fair to the chap, he mulliganed six times and has drawn badly. But, and you often find this when you look through games, and I've, I've done it myself on more than one occasion, he says he's been drawing badly, and he has, but he had a VS Seeker and he played a Battle Compressor. Had he used that Battle Compressor to get rid of a draw supporter, maybe a Judge, maybe a Sycamore, he would have been able to Sycamore a couple of turns ago. Now I'm in a much better position. He can KO the Raichu here and get rid of his energy, but I've got a Pikachu on the bench. And now I know I've got game because I've got a teammate in hand. All I need, I can get a Raichu with the... Um, 
oh, I'm actually going to top deck one. But I could have got a Raichu with the level ball. I can then get any energy using that teammate supporter, and I'll be fine. Now, because this is a tournament, and I know I'm about to win, I have to ask my opponent whether he'd like to go first in the next game. I assume he would. Now, it's not going to make a difference because I don't win the coin flip, so he's going to get to go first anyway. But, you know, these things happen. So I know that now I can evolve the Raichu and I can use the teammates. Now, were this a real game, I would go and get an energy and a Crobat. Um, and I forget myself for a second here. I've got the win. I should just take it. Although I, he hadn't actually replied at that stage, so there's my excuse. I'm waiting for my opponent to reply and let me know if he'd like to go first or second. So now I can drop the um, Crobat and I can get the KO with Raichu and all will be good. Now with the Raichu against Houndoom matchup, it's not a, Megas aren't great for Raichu because even with your Skyfield and your full bench and your bats and 210 damage is a lot. It is essentially a full bench with a muscle band or a goal bat and a crow bat. And that is a lot to ask for, ladies and gentlemen. But unlike the Mewtwo game where you're playing the Mewtwo and they have the opportunity to heal, use that damage change attack to get rid of all the energy, all the damage, Houndoom can't do that. And if they use an AZ or a Super Scoop Up, they have to get rid of the energy they're using. And any turn they Blacksmith is a turn they're not using something like a Judge or uh, they're not using something like a um, Lysander. So I'm really not worried about it so much. This is a matchup where I can afford to take two hit KOs. And like the Raichu deck does, and this is one of the real downsides of the deck, one of the reasons why I'm testing it in a Poker Beach tournament rather than going full steam ahead and making this my ECC deck or something of that nature. For those that don't know, that's the biggest tournament in Europe that I'm going to in a, a week and a half, in a couple weeks' time, week and a half, I believe. I don't know if I'm playing Raichu bats there. And one of the reasons, very simply, is you lose, your opponent can be having a really bad game, a really bad setup, and yet as long as they've got a half-decent Pokemon and a couple of energy, they're still taking a prize every single turn. While you're sitting there desperately, um, while you're sitting there desperately trying to get your Golbats and your Crobats and your Stage 1 Raichu and your DCEs and all of that. Now, my opponent's asking me to call here. I think he misunderstood. He gets to go first this game anyway. So I'm just going to tell him it doesn't matter what happens with a coin flip. Because even if I win the coin flip, and we all know at this stage I'm not going to. Even if I win the coin flip, I'm just going to choose to go second anyway. So this way we can best simulate a best of three tournament in, you know, as if it were actually at a, a proper tournament. And true to form, I've lost the coin flip. The official tally at this stage is 25 games played, 5 coin flips won. Which is a nice kind of 20% rocking. I think that's right. So here, I'm not feeling too bad. Yeah, I'm going second, but I've got an energy and I've got a sycamore. So it's going to be okay. Now, my opponent doesn't mulligan, and that's a good thing. So we can just get straight into it. And actually, he seems to have a bench Pokemon as well this game. So like I say, the thing with Raichu is you really do end up in a situation where your opponent can put a lot of pressure on you without doing very much while you have to really try. Now, that's weird. My opponent plays Pokemon Catcher. Now, I should say that in this tournament, extra prizes are being given for the players that get furthest with unusual decks. My opponent playing a Houndoom deck with Entei and Pokemon Catcher and things of that nature. If my opponent does well, I like his chances. Now, I'm playing a very unusual Raichu Bats list, although some people apparently don't believe it's mine, but I don't think it's unusual enough to get fancy prizes like that. So I play a Sycamore, I've got a Feebas on the bench, and that's alright. I've got a Skyfield, which I'm going to put down for two reasons. Firstly, I've got a Shaman in hand and want to draw more cards. And secondly, you can see I've got a Sycamore in hand, so I'm going to get rid of two Skyfields next turn. I might as well play one now. 
So I get a Pikachu ready to go next turn, and once again, I'm going to have to play that Muscle Band, because I want to draw more with the Shaman. Now, I know I've got a decent setup, and I'm going to sick them all next turn. I'm being a complete idiot here. You drag it onto the bench. That was very silly of me. But I want to get the best setup that I can, and that really involves the use of some basics. Now, an awkward decision here, do I Super Rod back in the Raichu and the Crobat that I discard, or do I discard the Super Rod? And I think I have to discard the Super Rod here, because I need either the teammates or the Sycamore next turn, depending on whether my opponent takes a KO or not. And I really need to get another Pokemon here. And I'm going to go for a Shaman so that I can hopefully turn one Pokemon into many. I'm only drawing three extra cards with Shaman, but I really want to draw as much as I can, as quick as I can. I really want... Oh, there we see, another Zubat. So that's actually worked out quite nicely. What I really want to do with this deck as soon as possible is get minimum two Pikachu, two Zubat on the bench. So that I can avoid my opponent doing what he did next, last turn, and or last game, and doing something like he takes out my only Pikachu. That is not a situation I want to be in. Now I'm deciding here, do I want to retreat the Zubat? Because I've seen my Feebas is prized. Do I retreat the Zubat? Just let him kill my Feebas? I've decided not to. Um, although he has got an Entei active with an energy and a muscle band, and his first attack does 30 and reduces damage done to it by 30 the following turn. Add the muscle band and the extra 20 damage that that does, and that, an that Entei, if, as long as he's got an energy, will KO that Zubat. There is no doubt about that, he's got the KO. Um, he's also got a burning energy on there, incidentally. And my opponent here, he's going to play an Ultra Ball and... Um, presumably, he's going to go and get, you would imagine either a Shaman, or if he's playing it, oh, there we go, I was going to say the Hooper, because if he's playing Hooper, then not only can my opponent get a Shaman to draw more cards, but he can also get, there we go, a pair of Houndooms, so now we can have two Houndooms on the bench, and he can have his Shaman to draw more cards as well, and all he needs is one energy to get the KO here. Now, he plays a Pokemon Catcher, and that's a Tails. Um, presumably there, he was going to be trying to go after the um, the Pikachu. Now, Pokemon Catcher is a really worrying card, because we've all seen how powerful Lysander is in the current format. Well, Pokemon Catcher is that, plus you can play a Blacksmith. So I was saying earlier in the game, I'm not worried about him using something like a Blacksmith, because then he can't Lysander. Well, he can still play Pokemon Catcher. So my opponent here is going to be playing a Battle Compressor. No, sorry, he's taken a Battle Compressor from the Trainer's Mail. Now he's going to play the Battle Compressor. And did he learn from the previous game? Is he going to go ahead and try and put a Supporter in the discard to put, make his VS Seekers a little better? I'm not entirely sure. That was very quick. I know he got some Fire Energy in the discard there. Um... But he still hasn't drawn any energy. Now, there's an argument there that he shouldn't have battle compressed energy. Because now he's less likely to draw into it when he plays a Shaman. Now, my opponent plays a Parallel City, putting me down to three Pokemon. That's a pain, but it's not the end of the world. You can see I've got a Skyfield in my hand. But Parallel City actually reduces, if he's putting my bench down to three, it reduces the damage done by Fire Pokemon by 20. So now, even if he's got an energy for the Entei, that Muscle Band puts him up to 50, Parallel City puts him down to 30, he's not getting a KO on my Zubat, ladies and gentlemen. So yes, that Parallel City's reduced my bench, but it's actually taken him out of KO range, and somehow he didn't draw an energy. Though I remind you, he Battle Compressed some energy, so that actually made him less likely to draw into energy when he played the Sycamore. So maybe that Battle Compress is a reason he didn't get energy. Now, once again, I haven't got a DCE. Are you seeing a pattern? Uh, but I've got a DCE, I believe, on that... Have I got a DCE on that Pikachu? No, I don't think I have. No, I haven't got any DCE on the field. But I can put those Pokemon back into my deck. And that Parallel City actually did me a favour in some ways... Um, it's one of the reasons I play so many Shaman in this deck, because when my opponent gets rid of Skyfield, 
hopefully I'm in a position where I can, you know, I go down to five bench or three if it's Parallel City, and I discard my shame in, and then my opponent doesn't have easy bench prizes. And I still don't have a DCE. You can see there, I've drawn through about half of my deck. There is still no DCE. But I start doing a bit of maths here, and I remember that if I drop two gold bats, I can do 40 damage. So let's do it to his benched Shaman. I can then swoop across to do 10 damage to all of his Pokemon, and that Shaman will go up to 50 damage, leaving its 60 HP remaining. And you can see I've got two Crobats in hand, each of which can drop 30 damage. So next turn, I can put both those Crobats down, and I can KO his Shaman on the bench for two prizes before I attack. And I'm checking his um, Entei here. He would need to play a Blacksmith and an Energy in order to get the KO on Golbat next turn. He needs to do a, uh, the second attack for 130, which is two fire and two colorless. So we can only get the KO with Entei next turn by dropping a Blacksmith and an Energy... And I just looked at his discard pile there. He doesn't have a blacksmith in the discard pile. When he used the battle compressor to get rid of that energy, he didn't drop a blacksmith. That means his chances of drawing a blacksmith, because he can't get it from a VS Seeker, it's got to be a blacksmith, are very slim. So I'm feeling pretty good about my chances here. Next turn, I can drop both those gold back, KO the Shaman on the bench, and then play a Sycamore for a new hand of seven cards, which really should net me a double colourless energy. Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I'm feeling pretty good right now. This game is, and he's judging me. Look at my hand! Okay, the Dark Energy's doing nothing, but I had two Crobats that would have got a KO, and I've had to get rid of both those Crobats, and I had a Sycamore in hand. I was just going to go Crobat, Crobat, KO your Shaman, Sycamore, boom, you dead. Which is very upsetting. Now, still no energy from my opponent, but I remind you that he did drop... Some of them with a Battle Compressor, and that reduced the chances of him drawing into it next turn. Now, I'm wary about a Parallel City here, but I really want to draw up my Raichus. And he did judge me into a DCE, so worst case scenario, I'm going to KO this Entei. Now, here's the problem. If I KO the Entei, I go down to five prizes. He's not going to drop another EX, so I'm going to mean, it's going to mean that I have to KO three EXs and take seven prizes to win the game. But what else am I going to do this turn? Use an Evil Tail to do 30 damage, give him a turn to set up. Yes, I know he's got a teammate's in hand. I saw him grab it with the VS Seeker. But I wanted to get my setup going. And I wanted to draw an extra card because I had nothing in hand. And I thought, maybe I'll draw something off my prizes. The other thing is, every turn I give him to set up is another turn where maybe he draws a parallel city. And I don't want him to do that. I've got a Skyfield in hand, but there's only so many basics in your deck. If I have to get rid of four bench Pokemon, it's going to be a real problem for me to fill my bench up again this late in the game. And I've used a, a Super Rod and a Sacred Ash, so I am going to struggle. Good news, my opponent plays a teammates, puts the wrong Pokemon active, I'm assuming he wanted to put the Shaman active, get a DCE and Sky return to get it off the field, but he didn't do that, and it's worked in my favour. I can evolve to Crobat, do 30 damage to the Bent Shaman, and now I can use Crobat's attack Skill Dive to do 30 damage to the Bent Shaman, take two prizes, and then draw an extra two cards from my prizes. Now, I don't know what my opponent was planning to do. He didn't say. But I can only imagine his plan was teammates for a DCE. Oh, and they're good prizes. I can now attach a DCE to a Shaman, and, uh, to a Raichu, and then DCE. Now, we've all been there, especially on PTCGO. It's very easy to misclick. 
um, to click the wrong thing by mistake. So he put the Houndoom up, and it was an unfortunate mistake. That 30 damage wouldn't have done much, but it would have given him a Shaman in the hand that he could have used to set up, and it would have meant that I couldn't have taken those two cheeky prizes with the Crobat, and look at my hand now. Next turn, I'm going to put a DC on one of the Raichu, and then I get to shame in to draw more cards. I'm in a very good position. Um, it's don't know if it's possible, because my Milotic's prized in this game, um, and I've used my DCE already, so no, it's not going to be possible for me to get a KO this turn. The maximum I can do is 160, plus a Crobat is 190, plus the 10 on him, I can get 10 HP short, and that is the very, very best I can do. But, I'm two prizes up, I've now got two Raichus, both of whom have a DCE attached to them, and now I can put the Evil Tau down, play the Shaman, and draw some cards. Now, there is an argument here not to do that. Now, I'm going to miscalculate here. Um, oh no. Now, the argument is... I've got my attackers, I know he's playing Parallel City. So the argument there was, keep my hand as it is, I don't, I'm, I'm going to be going for a two-hit KO anyway, I'm going to try and get him in skill dive range here, but I'm going to miscalculate by 10. I want to put him on 180, so that if he retreats, I can skill dive with Crobat for the KO, but I am going to do a slight miscalculation here. Now the other argument, and that's why... I just played those 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 Pokemon. Now the other argument would be don't fill your bench. No, okay, I thought that was a different turn. Sorry. I'm not miscalculating. Maybe that's going to be the next turn. I was actually able to get the KO with the Crobat. So sorry, ladies and gentlemen, all the maths on that last turn. I think I might be looking at the screen here. The screen I'm looking at is actually very small. I believe I um I misread what was on the Pokemon. Either way, I get the big KO with Raichu, life is good, and now I'm feeling pretty good about my chances. Now, I'm thinking, what can I do? With a full bench, I put him on 170, he's 40 HP away from being KO'd, and I don't get the KO here. Um, so really, there's no point benching another one of those Pokemon. My best bet is to just retreat and attack with Raichu. And this is what I was trying to say in the previous turn before I confused myself and miscalculated. The theory is, very simply, I've got a Skyfield, two Basics, and a couple of Ultra Balls in hand. I don't play it all. And that way, if my opponent... Uh, if my opponent does play something like a Parallel City, or any other stadium, then I can put my Skyfield down, which I've got in hand... And then I can play the Shaman, the Evil Tau, the Zubat, etc. And start filling up my bench again to do more damage with the Raichu. So I'm thinking here, do I put a Pokemon down to put the Houndoom into Skill Dive range? The argument is no, I don't. On the previous turn, I only played this game earlier today. I, I misremembered. So I apologize for my mistake on the damage calculation. Although feel free to mock me in the comments if you want. I'm fairly thick-skinned. So here I'm going to get the um, hit with Raichu. I choose not to Sycamore. I could go and look for a Sycamore for AVS Seeker. So that I can Lysander next turn if he retreats. But I don't know, maybe he plays a Judge or a Parallel City or, you know. I, I want to play it safe. That's a good hand. Whatever he does next turn, except for a Judge, I've got a good hand. And even if he judges, I've got a Shaman and a Sycamore going back into my hand. Um, so this game isn't going to go on much longer, so I remind you, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. We've been growing quite nicely lately. I'd like to see that continue. Make sure you like this video and chuck down any comments you'd like. Do you like seeing these videos from the Poker Beach tournament against other players competing for, um, real packs of cards, etc.? Or would you rather keep it to proper tournament games? What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments. I am going to do a deck profile on this Raichu deck, but not quite yet. Look for it in the next couple of weeks. It is coming, probably just after the ECC, just in case I do play at the ECC. I really don't know right now. So thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to get the KO of Raichu and win the game. Thank you very much for watching. Check out all of my other videos. There are some doozies on there, quite frankly, um, including some history lessons I'm starting to give you.
Look after yourselves till next time. My name is Ross, and you've been watching. Thank you very much for watching, I should say. You've been watching PTCG Radio.